For our psalm reading, let's open our Bibles to Psalm 103 of David. Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being. Praise His holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known His ways to Moses, His deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will He harbor His anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it, and it is gone, and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear Him, and His righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep His covenant and remember to obey His precepts. The Lord has established His throne in heaven, and His kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works, everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, my soul. Have a wonderful and a blessed Sunday to everyone. Welcome to our praise and worship this afternoon. Truly, God is faithful and firm on what He has promised to us. We have been struggling of so many trials in our lives, but still God is a strong foundation of our faith. In Him alone, He made us strong to defeat our enemies such as fear, worries, anxiety, and doubts. No matter what happened around the world today, the Lord remains the same. He is loyal, omnipotent, and a loving God. Though sometimes God allows trials so we can learn to be more dependent on Him. And He proved us that He can come of any kind of storms that strikes us. Be still that I know that I am God. That what He says in Psalm 46 verse 10. Bless the Lord in His holiness, loving kindness, lowliness to anger, kind heart, His goodness, and His great name. Mga kapatid, samahan niyo po kaming kumanta sa hapong ito. Amen.
Good afternoon, MCF family, and for those who are join us, joining us today uh, virtually, my prayer that the Lord will bless this message to us, and Happy New Year to all of us. This is our third Sunday, and I just want to share with you the message entitled, What is Next? What is Next? And we will find it in the book of Philippians, chapter 3. The book of Philippians written by Apostle Paul during his second missionary journey. And also this one of his prison epistle. And the other three books is Ephesians, Colossians, and Philemon. And Philippians was written also in prison. I just want to read it with, to you in Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 up to verse 14. Please follow it with your eyes. It says here in Philippians chapter 3, verse 7, but whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For whose sake I have lost all things, I consider them garbage, that I may gain Christ and be found in Him, not having the righteousness of my own that comes from the, from the law, but for that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. Look at in verse 10. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of His resurrection and participation in His sufferings, because like Him in His death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Now that I have already obtained all this, all I have already arrived at my goal, but I press on toward to take hold of what which Christ took hold of me. Look at in verse 13. It's very clear. It says in here, Brothers and sisters, I do not want to consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But he said, One thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. May the Lord add blessing to the reading of His Word. Shall we come to the Lord in prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we thank You for this precious Word. I pray that You will bless this into our heart. And I pray that this message will speak to each one of us, O Lord, at this afternoon. I pray, O Lord, May your special anointing to your messenger and to all your listeners. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and Amen. Philippians chapter 3, what is next? And probably this is your question today. What is next? Especially the month of January. For many people, they always make their own personal resolution, plans or goals during this first month. But you know what? The month of January is named after the Roman god Janus, who was actually depicted as a man with two faces. One face looked back into the year that had passed, and the face bore traces of sorrow, dismay, and perplexity. But the other face, looking forward, personified hope, and confidence and this is what where we came from the name January from the Roman God Janus I'm sure at this time you already have many plans in your life and even as a church we have planned for this year 2022 and that is nice but the question is what is next because in the in the direction I think we can answer this question by listening some four things in our life. You can see probably in your photos, in this, in, this, uh, uh, in this PowerPoint, wherein there are so many people, they don't know what is next, especially for this boy and girl. They don't know what will happen for this year 2022, after 2021. And also, for example, like the, the newlyweds. If you will look at the picture of this newlywed, and what will happen for their future? It's so difficult to know 
because of what's happening around us. Today, we have some protocols. The other day, and there's another protocols and protocols and protocols. So it means we don't know what's going on. We don't know what is the future that holds us. So what is next? And also, how about those uh, uh, new, new parents for, they, for their babies? What will happen in the future of their children? And also, we know we are all informed about the typhoon or death in the Philippines before Christmas. And there are so many devastated families. If you will see all those pictures, you can see these families, they don't know about their future. How they can build again their homes or their houses. How they can get their food. And what is next after that? And for those families, probably they are questioning, when are we going to have our own like, like family reunion? This is the two consecutive years. We, have, we don't have our Christmas uh, a party. Our own, like a church, and even our own family, and even New Year celebration is so difficult to gather in a big group. And also, for many churches, if you can see my background like this, it's empty. And many churches are empty nowadays. There are just limited people who can come to church. And even, at, even other churches, they close their building. It all virtually. Probably our question is, when will be our next corporate worship? Wherein there is no more, uh, uh, there, there is no more uh, number of people who can come, that everyone can come together to worship God. What is next? As we have read this morning, or this afternoon, the message in Philippians chapter 3, we can find it in here that in spite of what's happening around us, and the advice here that in this is not negotiable for us to think and see what we are going the first direction that we need from God. In this year, this year 2022, and what is next, we don't know. But through this study, we can learn so many things to face our tomorrow, year 2022, and the years to come. Number one that we can look, we can, we can, we can learn from this passage also, is we look upward. We look upward. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 9, it says, And so, from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of His will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. What does that mean? While it was always been utmost important to our church, it must even more so in the days ahead. We must continually focus on God on what God wants for us as individual and also He wants us as a church. If you are a member of this church, of MCF, you are responsible continually looking to God for His direction, His blessing, and for the fulfillment of His purpose. There can Never be a time when we see seeking the Lord in this way. The moment that we do, we cut God out of the process and cannot hope to be blessed by Him. And that's why it's so important in this text, in this study, what is next is to look upward. To look upward. And the key word in here is prayer. And that's the key of looking upward. Looking upward means prayer. Panalangin po. We have to make sure that each one of us is equipped to pray, willing to pray, and actually praying on behalf of this church and each other every day. What is next? We look upward. Pray for the leadership of the church. Pray for each member, for each one of us. Thank God for Pastor Adele leadership and Sister Lobelia, she is looking after and all the leaders of the church that help us 
to minister in all the, all the members of the local church, of MCF, your contribution to the kingdom of God, financially, and even your talents will be a big help. Encouragement. And of course, and of course, we are engaged, all of us, we are engaged in a spiritual battle. battle. And we have to, to listen for God's instruction or we will find ourselves wandering aimlessly because God has given to us the gift of prayer as a means of communicating to Him. We can find in the Bible for so many examples that by prayer, there is a great revival and change so many things. I remember one time, I have a counseling to a couple, especially to the wife, and he, she was praying for so many years for her husband to change. But she changed her prayer. Lord changed my heart. And after that prayer, after the Lord changed her heart, it follows her husband to change her heart. They are happily couple nowadays. And they are serving the Lord. So prayer. I don't know if you know David Yonggichu. He is the pastor of your Edo Full Gospel Church. They have a member of one, one, uh, more than one million in South Korea. This is the world's largest church. And Pastor Chu said, look at what he said. I have not followed a secret formula in the mighty church growth we are experiencing. There is no question in my mind that what has been done in Korea can also be duplicated in every part of the world. The key is prayer. Dr. Yong Hee Chu, I witnessed the place in South Korea. For, for twice I've been there in South Korea and we attended the conference through his brother Paul Chu Yonggi. And David Yonggi's church is bigger than Paul Chu Yonggi, the brother. And the Lord so did so many miracles in, 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 in South Korea. How? Because of their prayer. And founded a church in South Korea. He is the founder of South Korea in, in this church. And they have so many members. But last year, September 14, 2020, he passed away almost two years now. More than, more than a year, September 14, when David Porchu Yonggi passed away. But his life, his legacy is still continued in South Korea because he looked up and prayed. I remember so many times, the Lord reminded us to pray and we neglect. But what is next? What's happening nowadays is always to look up. 2022, we don't know that holds for us what is coming. And, how, and when will this pandemic will be end? Prayer. Look up. And God will help us. But there is a good example on how we are to pray for our church. This is just a suggestion. We pray for understanding, for wisdom, and for direction. Let me give you some specific ways that you can begin praying for MCF today. Instead of doing nothing, we can pray that we would experience true worship. Here in MFBC, I always encourage, especially those people, who are joining us in worship virtually. I told them, during the worship, you sit down with your family or by yourself and listening the full worship. From the praise and worship at the end of the benediction. Because there are tendency, if we are doing virtually, people are doing other things. Let's make it like Virtual worship that you are also in the church or in the building worshiping God. Because other people, while joining the worship, they are doing the cooking. And other they are sweeping the floor. 
and doing other things. Beloved in the Lord, let's look up and pray. And we can pray that we will be able to experience the preacher, the praise and worship, and all the listeners. The focus is not ourselves. The focus is God. And also pray that we will know, accept, and obey the Word of God. Let's listen to the Word of God. We, we visited a family just recently. They said, after the worship, they talk about the message, and they also memorize some passages during, you know, during the preaching. It's so encouraging. And also pray for unity in the church. Yes, we have different kind of opinion. We have different kind of likes and wants. But of course, let us be united according to God's will. It is not always myself. It is always for the glory of God. Soon, this, uh, uh, this, uh, all these pews in our church building, this will be removed. It will be changed by chairs to accommodate more people. And we thank God for wisdom and for the unity of the church. It's so difficult. They are all nice pews. But we need this space to accommodate more people. It is not about the pews. It is about the souls. Let us pray for unity and pray for a great harvest of unchurched people. You know, you know what? Our worship service, you can share it to your loved ones somewhere in the Philippines or in many places that they may be able to hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We have some families who testified with us. They said, our family in Antique, Aklan, and even in Cebu, and, and many places, our worship service, they always forwarded it. They can also join our worship service. And thank God. And now they have their own Bible study. was started during the pandemic because they opened their door, their home, through our worship service. Pray for the great harvest. Pray for joy in the hearts and lives of us all. They're just a practical life-changing ways to begin looking and so many things that we can pray for look up and what is next even what's happening around us let's look up that's the key word let us a prayer prayer and prayer especially the leadership of the church pray for the leadership of the church pray for even for our nation pray for the medical people who are looking after who are sick and allow them that the Lord will help them, even the Bible study leaders. Let's look up. Secondly, let's move forward. What is that? After we look up and pour prayer, let's move forward. Look at here in Philippians 13, chapter 3, 13 and 14. I like this. And this is our key verse, actually, in the book of Philippians chapter 3. It said, Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own. But one thing I do, Apostle Paul said, forgetting what lies behind and behind and is training forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Wow, praise the Lord. Amen. I have always enjoyed watching like track and field, especially during the Olympic. And even in many races, because I can see, you know what, when they finish the race, they cross on the finish line, even the 5,000 kilometers, run, and people, they are very tired. But they when finish the line, the finish line, and even if they are not, even if they are not the winner, even if they are the hundred, at the hundred place to cross the line, there is like a fulfillment. Let's move forward. While we can always learn from our past, we need to, to focus on what will move us into the future because that is where we are headed, whether we like it or not. Because we cannot stop the world from turning. It is either going to move the future with the church on board. 
even 2021 probably there are so many failures for us disappointment and even angers or unforgiveness in our hearts but he said here in in Philippians chapter 3 I consider that I have been no forgetting those things what lies behind and what is the key word in here when we look forward the key word is progress we need to progress probably there are so uh, many things that we did not do last did last 2020 2021 and let's have progress this year 2022 there are so many people they don't like changes if the changes is for the glory of god if the changes are for the good of the church it is good but if it is like unbiblical if it is not for the progress of the church or for a personal reason and it is not god's will changes make things for us to progress especially the work of the lord if you are not moving forward beloved in the lord you are moving backward if god is really who he claims that he is and if the church is really God's movement to change the world, then that means we, MCF family, the church of Jesus Christ, have the power. Beloved in the Lord, we have the power and the purpose to accomplish what God wants to get done. What God wants to get done in 2022. In the heart of the leadership of the church, the pastor and the leadership of the church, let's ride on let's help let unify one heart one mind for the glory of god and moving forward and that's so important for us and that is what is next let's look upward we move forward and the key word of moving forward is progress the key word for looking upward is prayer and now number three we change inward and that is next we change inward in psalm 21 verse 13 a wonderful verses a wonderful verse i mean it says be exalted O lord in your strength we will sing and praise your power your power and praise god we have the power we have, the, we have the strength to change inwardly. One new year, in the tournament of process parades, a beautiful float suddenly is spattered and quit. Because every year, during the new year, they had like a parade. And then, it was because one of the float or the or the big truck it was out of gas you know what the whole parade was held up it was stopped it's a long lineup of cars and trucks and floats and then someone returned with a can of gasoline you know what the amusing thing it's so strange and so funny was the float represented is the standard oil company can you imagine this float is the standard oil company with all of its vast oil resources but they are out of gas it it is a trap was out of gas what we can learn in this story often as we christians attempting to accomplish all the things I just mentioned we neglect our own personal spiritual maintenance and find ourselves running out of gas even though we have the resources of heaven at our disposal what does this mean there are some people or christian they are very much involved in the church or in the ministry they forgot their personal communion with god do you remember martha and mary mary sat down in front of jesus 
and Mary and Martha was so busy preparing for food. Nothing wrong to do the ministry of the Word of the Lord. There is nothing wrong to prepare for food. But we must not forget our spiritual maintenance. Our spiritual maintenance. Everything in our hands and our lives, in our church, of course, our commitment. What is the key word? We change inward. It means praise. Praise. As we praise, as we praise, as we praise God, whether through our prayers or our singing to Him, we find the renewal of strength and a restatement of our purpose as His children. Praise is simply acknowledging God for who He is and what He has done. Probably 2021 is not a good year for some of us. But there is like brightness. There is like a sunshine. There is like better future for 2022 if we will just change inward. Because the way we look, our future, if we will look in the eyes of Jesus, in the eyes of God, there is always hope. There is always hope. It, it means let us praise God even what's happening around us. In Psalm 21, 13, example in here said, Be exalted, O Lord, in your strength. We will sing and praise your power. I thank God we change the word. We change inward. We change inwardly. It is the outpouring praise and proclaim the wonder of God. Because in our praise of God, we are admitting, we are admitting that we, that we are, but mere human and do not have the ability to save the world and do not have the strength to keep going and do not have the staying power to keep us going. As, as Christians, we are saying to God, listen, listen, mga kapatid, we are saying to God that while we do not have these abilities, we know that He does and we are asking Him to fill and sustain us through the struggle. God has the ability to change us and use us for His ultimate glory. God is able to help us to change inwardly. But there is two important words, as I recall. For this, we must have humility. Humility, total submission to God. Humility and also obedience. To obey God. Obedience. Have you not known in, in Isaiah chapter 40, 28 to 31, I like this. Isaiah is, is asking this question. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, he does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. And said, He gives power to the faint. And to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall faint and weary, and young men shall be fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Praise the Lord. To change inwardly, we need to hold on on God. And this is a very good encouragement for us because God is asking us to place our dependence upon Him to see us through. It does not all depend on me, on myself. It is depend on me allowing God to work through me, it, bol it all begins in the acknowledgement of who God is. If we will acknowledge God, who God is in our life, then we can change inwardly. I cannot change myself. Hindi ko po kaya baguhin ang aking buhay. It is only God. You cannot change your life. And people will say, oh, I'm this. I'm, I'm like, I cannot change anymore. 
Parang sinabi natin that we say, God has no more power in my life. If we will humble ourselves and obey to God, whatever vices, whatever bad habits that we have in our life, God is able, can able to change us if we will depend upon Him. So we must change inwardly. We change inward and the key word is praise. Now, let's go to number four. We reach outward. What is next? After prayer, and then after our, our prayer, and also after our progress, and praise to God, and then number three, we reach outward. We reach outward. Look at here in verse at First Corinthians nine, twenty-two and twenty-three. First Corinthians chapter nine, twenty-two and twenty-three. When I am with those who are weak, I share their weakness. Apostle Paul is the one who's saying this. For I want to bring the weak to Christ. Yes, I try to find common ground with everyone, doing everything I can to save some. I do everything to spread the good news and share in its blessings. Amen. In this verse, we are clearly called to equip, minister to, and worship with other Christ followers. Our calling as a church is to reach those who are not yet in the church. To reach out those who who are still unsaved. Maybe your loved ones, maybe your co-workers, your classmates, and others, the people around us. Remember this, the purpose of the church is to reach out the lost and to build up. If you will remember and recall when Jesus, before his ascension, in Matthew 28, he said, Go and teach all nations, and then baptizing them in the name of the Father. So the main reason and focus and vision of the church is to go, to reach out. Every believer calls to be a minister, not only the pastor, that only the leaders of the church, each one of us, must reach out and share what God's happened in your life. You cannot share if you don't have. For example, you cannot give uh, your offering to the Lord or finances if you don't have money. And the same thing. I cannot share the gospel if I don't have the gospel. I cannot share the testimony if, if, if I don't have testimony in my life. And the reason we can give it, the reason I can, I, can, I can share because I studied it, I learned it. We reach outward. The church is the only cooperative society in the world that exists for the benefits of its non-members. And that is true. We must reach out. And I thank God for the vision of 2022 of MCF that each one will be a member, will be involved in a small group to build up. And that is good. I supported it. I support it. But don't forget, as we grow, we also reach out the lost. We reach out the lost. So Paul understood in this verse, in 1 Corinthians 9.22, Apostle Paul understood that this main purpose and the main purpose of the church was not to feed those in full stomachs, but to offer nourishment to the starving. We enjoy, listen, we enjoy the blessing of the gospel by sharing the gospel. It is good for us to have our Bible study, to study God's word, to encourage one another. But remember this, we enjoy the blessing of the gospel by sharing the gospel. 
Every time I watch a very good movie, every time I, 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 I read some, a, good, a good story, I share it. And I'm happy to share it for the beneficial of other people. The same thing with the gospel. There is like joy in our life if we share the gospel because the saving is not in our hands. We are just God's instrument. It is God who saves people and we are just God's instrument. We are the church at its best when we are being the church to the unchurch. My job is not to turn away from those who do not yet know Christ, but to show them the love of Christ that has saved me. So, what is the key word to reach outward? Potential. Every conversation, every time we, we go to different places, there is like a potential. I wonder how many of us really have the idea how greatly God can use us. God can use us in different ways. What we need is just to obey God's calling. Are you more concerned with our comfort level or people's eternal destiny? There are so many discomfort in, 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 in Christianity, in our Christian walk with God. But for the sake of the gospel and for the salvation of many people, there is like a great potential, we reach outward, and that is next. We reach outward, the salvation, and this is God. If our hearts are right, listen, if our hearts are right, we are more committed to the Lord's commission than we our own personal agenda. The potential is absolutely limitless. There's always the potential. Jesus once gave up I remember this in the Gospel of John, 34 to 35. The Lord Jesus once gave a wake-up call to his disciples, and he said, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Do you not stay? There are yet four months. Then come the harvest. Said, Jesus said, Look, I tell you, Lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. I know that God knows what's happening 2020, 2021 for this pandemic. And I know God has a purpose for us to reach the lost. If we cannot see the world around us that is in need of a Savior, then our eyes are pointed in the wrong direction. I want to repeat that phrase. If we cannot see the world around us that is in need of a Savior, then our eyes are pointed in the wrong direction. Do you remember the song, People Need the Lord? People Need the Lord. We had a tremendous luxury of living in the midst of great mission field. And we have been commissioned by Christ to go. The greatest day of our church are still ahead of us. The fields are ripe. The potential is great. And we will continue to reach out to those in need. We will reach out the outcast. We will reach out those who are not yet saved. If we, that's the next that God wants us to do. So in closing, as a final challenge for this message, the four important keyword is prayer, progress, praise, and potential. And these four words are the answer to the question, what is next? They are keywords of seeing God's will manifest in our midst. And praise God today because I see us already living by these words and growing closer and closer to God's directive for each passing day. I want to thank each one of you for hearing and acting 
upon God's call, we can do it together and each one of us in partnership with God. We are exciting. We, are ha- we have an exciting time ahead of us. 2022, there are so many things that God wants us to do. We can do it. We can do it by the grace of God. Do not afraid a pace of life. This new year has a lot of promises for us. Trust God and everything will be fine. God bless you. Shall we pray? Father God, thank you and we praise you for this word of challenges, encouragement, and promise that we will be able to to, to follow your will and to have a bright future for this year 2022. I pray that your word, O Lord, will manifest in our life, in our heart, in our mind. I pray for your special blessing and anointing to MCF family members and community. May this word, O Lord, will continue to work in their life. We praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you and God bless you all.
Good afternoon, church. Here's our announcement. Tuesday, Zoom Bible study at 8 p.m. Thursday, Acts Fellowship at 5 p.m. Saturday, Bible study at 5 p.m. Sunday, worship will be Zoom every 3.30 p.m. Our birthday celebrants for January, January 2, Aliana, January 7, Sis Sheila, January 14, Lara, January 20, Sis Anna, January 21, Tintin, January 26, Tate Manuel, January 27, Tate Vict. Tithes and Offering Proverbs 3, verse 9 to 10. Honor the Lord by your wealth with the first fruit of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vat and your vest will brim over new wine. Brothers and sisters who are capable to give, we encourage to send your tithes and offering to MCF underscore online at yahoo.com. Once again, church, that concludes our Sunday Zoom Live worship service. And as always, we would like to thank all those people who always participate in our service or to our uh, program for today. A special thanks to uh, Brother Lem for reading the psalm uh, verse for today. Special thanks to um, Sister Sugar for uh, reading us the announcement. And also uh, for our praise and worship team headed by Sister Jelaine alongside with uh, Sister Bang, Sister Eileen, uh, Sister Larni, and Sister Lara. And also for our message for today uh, regarding uh, the new year, uh, which is our team uh, for this month, uh, special thanks to Pastor Lino for giving us that message entitled, What's Next? I hope and pray that uh, with that message, it would give us inspiration for this year, 2022 on what we we need to do and accomplish for the Lord. And uh, with that said, let us now come to the Lord in prayer for our closing prayer and benediction. So let us come to the Lord. Our Heavenly Father God, Lord, once again, we would like to thank you for bringing us all together, Lord, even through uh, this Zoom media. Thank you, Lord God, for the privilege of worshiping you and uh, listening to um, your message for for us today. Lord, we commit to you our life, and especially for this year, 2022, as we have heard from our uh, from the message, Lord God, on what we need, Lord God, to accomplish this year. And Lord, uh, we thank you for your love and for your fellowship, and we continue to ask, Lord, for your guidance, your mercy, and your protection, Lord God, for all of us, especially uh, now that um, uh, we are facing this situation in, in our lives, uh, the things that is happening, Lord God, in, in our surrounding. Lord, we thank you because uh, we know, Lord God, that you are always with us, uh, watching us and uh, providing us, Lord, all the things that we need. And truly, Lord, uh, we would like also to uh, give glory to you, Lord, uh, for uh, the things that you are going to do in our lives. We commit to you, Lord, um, our days to come and uh, continue, Lord, to be glorified. And now, church, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Go in peace and may God grant you what you ask of him. God bless. Keep safe and uh, continue to walk with God always.